webinar is being recorded. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Hallis and I'm a nutritionist with the Nutrition Education, Training and Technical Assistance Division in Child Nutrition Programs at the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food and Nutrition Service. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on crediting store-bought combination baby foods in the Child and Adult Care Food Program, which is also known as the CACFP. This webinar is part of Team Nutrition CACFP Halftime 30 on Thursday's webinar series. We will have time at the end of this webinar to take questions. However, you can use the chat box or Q&A box at any time during the webinar to enter your questions, and we will try to answer as many as we can at the end. So today's webinar focuses on crediting store-bought combination baby foods in the CACFP. This slide shows the first page of the worksheet we will be talking about today. The link to this worksheet was included in the reminder email that you should have received yesterday and today, and we will also send out a link where you can download this worksheet in the chat box now. It may be helpful to have this worksheet in front of you as we continue with the webinar. Um, and I do want to mention that when we say crediting or creditable throughout this webinar, we mean that the ingredient in a combination baby food can count toward a reimbursable meal or snack for infants. Okay, let's take a closer look at page one of the worksheet. This page includes a definition of combination baby foods. So what are they? Combination baby foods include a mixture of two or more foods, such as meat and vegetables. Under certain circumstances, these foods may be counted toward a reimbursable infant meal or snack in the CACFP. We know some CACFP operators are interested in serving combination baby foods at their site. We will talk about how ingredients in combination baby foods can count toward a reimbursable infant meal or snack in today's webinar. However, USDA does not require operators to serve store-bought combination baby foods. It is optional. There are many single ingredient baby foods that can be offered to infants instead. Those single ingredient baby foods can be store-bought or made from scratch, and all of those options are allowed. Before serving a store-bought combination baby food, always check with your state agency or sponsoring organization to see what kind of documentation might be required. You might need to keep the baby food packaging, provide a product formulation statement or other documentation to show how the food can be counted towards a reimbursable meal or snack in the CACFP. So you can see on the slide here, the CACFP infant meal pattern for breakfast, lunch, and supper. There are three required food components at breakfast, lunch, and supper for infants starting around six months. Those include breast milk or infant formula, grains, meat, meat alternate, and vegetables, fruit. Minimum serving sizes for foods in each component are listed as a range, such as zero to two ounces of cheese or zero to two tablespoons of vegetables, fruit, or both. As we know, not every baby is developmentally ready to eat solid foods as soon as he or she turns six months old. So having a range for a minimum allows childhood providers to feed infants based on each baby's feeding skills and developmental abilities. So let's look at how we would apply the minimum serving sizes to a baby's developmental abilities. Remember, on the previous slide, we said the minimum amount for vegetables, fruit at breakfast is zero to two tablespoons. So in this example, let's pretend we wanna serve pureed pears at breakfast. For a baby that is not developmentally ready for solids, you would offer him zero tablespoons of pears. For a baby that has just started eating pears, you might offer her one tablespoon of pureed pears. For a baby who's been eating pears regularly, you would offer him the full two tablespoons. In all of these scenarios, you are meeting the minimum serving size requirement for the vegetables fruit component at breakfast. Again, once the baby is regularly eating a food, you must offer the infant the full amount of the minimum serving size. So in this example, once the baby is regularly eating pears, you would offer him two tablespoons of pureed pears. The full amounts of the minimum serving size for all food components are listed at the top of page two on the worksheet. The combination baby foods should be offered only after the infant has been introduced to the individual ingredients. For example, before an infant is given a chicken and vegetable combination baby food, the infant should have already been introduced to both chicken 
and the vegetables individually as single component foods. This allows parents to watch the baby closely for any allergic reactions to the food. Because combination baby food should be offered only after the infant has been eating that food regularly, when you serve the combination baby food, you need to make sure you are serving the full amount of the minimum serving size for the food component. For example, if you're, if you're feeding a baby the chicken and vegetable combination baby food at lunch, you need to make sure you are giving the baby enough of that food to provide four tablespoons of chicken and two tablespoons of vegetables. If the combination baby food does not have the four tablespoons of chicken or two tablespoons of vegetables, then you need to serve more foods to meet the full amount for the grains, meat, meat alternates components, and vegetables components. So now let's take a closer look at the steps for crediting combination baby foods. These steps start on page two of the worksheet. Step one asks us to look for the creditable ingredients in the baby food and determine what food components the ingredients credit towards. Step two asks us to determine if the combination baby food only includes ingredients from one food component. Step three asks us to determine if the amount of each creditable ingredient listed on the food container has a unit of volume, such as cups, tablespoons, or teaspoons, and so on. Lastly, step four asks us to compare the amount of each food component in the container with the amount required in the CACFP infant meal pattern. So let's talk about step one. Again, Step one asks us to look for the creditable ingredients in the baby food and determine what food components the ingredients credit toward. You can find a creditable foods chart on page two of the worksheet. This chart is also shown on the slide here. This chart lists common ingredients that are creditable in the CACFP infant meal pattern. Some ingredients, creditable ingredients listed here include beans, iron fortified infant cereal, vegetables and fruits that are not freeze-dried and are not juiced, and more. This chart also shows which component the food item counts toward. We encourage you to look for and serve combination baby foods that are made of only creditable ingredients. This will help ensure the infant gets the nutrition he or she needs for proper growth and development. On page three, you will find a chart of non-creditable food items or ingredients. This chart is also shown on the slide here. Some ingredients that are not creditable listed here include cooked grains, macaroni and other pastas, nuts and seed butters, soy yogurt, and more. Okay, let's do a try it out polling question. This question looks at identifying creditable ingredients. So let's read this question together and then you can click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen. The question says, which ingredients can count toward a reimbursable lunch? Select all that apply. The container of food on the screen contains beef, tomato, peas, and macaroni. And you can use the charts we just discussed to help you answer this question. The charts can be found on pages two and three of the worksheet. So go ahead and click on an answer in the, in the poll on the side of your screen, and don't forget to click submit at the bottom. If you are unable to select or submit an answer, you can also just type your answer in the chat box. So go ahead and do that now. Do you think beef can count toward a reimbursable lunch? Tomato, peas, and or macaroni. And remember, you can select more than one answer. Okay, I'm gonna give you a few more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's see those responses. Okay, great work, everyone. The answer is beef tomato, and peas. If you look at page two of the worksheet, you see the creditable chart lists some of the ingredients that are commonly found in combination baby foods and can count toward a reimbursable meal or snack. This is also shown on the slide here. If you look down on that list, meats, such as beef and pork, can count toward a reimbursable lunch. Tomatoes and peas, which are vegetables, may also count toward a reimbursable lunch. These food items are outlined in yellow on this slide. If you look at page three of the worksheet, you will find a chart listing food items that are not creditable. In other words, these items cannot count toward a reimbursable meal or snack. The chart can also be seen on the slide here. 
you'll notice that macaroni and other pastas is listed. That is outlined in blue on the slide. So macaroni in this combination baby food cannot count toward a reimbursable infant meal or snack. Okay, let's do another try it out polling question. Let's read this question together and then you can click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen. So we know from the previous polling question that the creditable ingredients are beef, tomatoes, and peas. This question says, what food components do the creditable ingredients count toward? You can use the chart shown on the slide or the chart on page two of the worksheet to answer the question. So go ahead and click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen. And again, don't forget to click submit at the bottom. If you're unable to select or submit an answer, you can always just go ahead and use that chat box. So please do that now. Do you think the ingredients can count toward the grain, meat, meat alternates component? the vegetables fruit component, the breast milk iron fortified infant formula component, or all of the above. And again, you can select more than one answer. Okay, I'm gonna give you all a few more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's see those responses. All right, nice work everyone. The answer is grains, meat, meat alternates component, and the vegetables, fruit component, which most of you all got. So let's look at the chart on page two of the worksheet or on the slide, and we see that meats, like the beef and this baby food, are creditable toward the grains, meat, meat, meat alternates component. We also see that vegetables, like the tomatoes and peas, are creditable towards the vegetables, fruit component. And both of these items are outlined in yellow on your slide. Okay, now that we've determined what our creditable ingredients are and what food components the ingredients can count toward, let's move to step two. Step two asks us to determine if the combination baby food only includes ingredients from one food component. So let's take a look at an example. This slide shows a baby food pouch that contains a combination of squash, apple, and corn. Squash and corn are vegetables and an apple is a fruit. There are no additional ingredients. So we know that this baby food pouch only contains ingredients from one food component, the vegetable fruit component. Page two of the worksheet tells us that if the combination baby food only has ingredients from one component, we can skip step three and move to step four. Step four on page four of the worksheet tells us to compare the amount of each food component in the container with the amount required in the CACFP infant meal pattern. Since this baby food only includes ingredients from one food component, you must offer two tablespoons of this food to fulfill the vegetables fruit component. We will talk about step four in more detail in a few minutes. So let's look at another example. This is our baby food jar from the last polling question. Remember that we said the ingredients in this jar come from the grains, meat, meat alternate component, and the vegetables fruit component. This is an example of a combination baby food that contains ingredients from more than one food component. So now let's practice identifying food components with a polling question. Let's read this question together and then you can click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen. The ingredients in this tub are squash, turkey, and cooked grains. This question asks, does the combination baby food only include ingredients from one food component? You can use the charts on pages two and three of the worksheet to help you answer this question. So go ahead and click on, an, on the answer in the poll on the side of your screen, and don't forget to click submit at the bottom. If you're unable to select or submit an answer, you can also just type your answer in the chat box. So go ahead and do that now. Do you think the answer is yes? The combination baby food only includes ingredients from one food component? Or no, the combination baby food does not include ingredients from only one food component. Okay, I'm gonna give you all a few more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's see those answers. Okay, great work, everyone. The answer is no, the combination baby food does not include ingredients from only one food component. It includes ingredients from two food components. This combination baby food contains squash, which is a vegetable, 
So it's part of the vegetable fruit component. We also have turkey from the grain meat, meat alternates component. We know from page three of the worksheet that cooked grains are not creditable. Therefore, this food contains ingredients from more than one food component. Page two of the worksheet tells us that if the combination baby food includes ingredients from more than one food component, then we must go to step three on the worksheet. So step three asks us to determine if the amount of each creditable ingredient is listed on the food container as a unit of volume. Units of volume include cups, tablespoons, or the abbreviation TBSP, or teaspoons, or the abbreviation TSP, and so on. Let's use the squash and turkey combination baby food we just looked at as an example. The package shows that we have four TBSP, or tablespoons, of squash, and one tablespoon of turkey. Tablespoons are a way to measure volume, so here we've made sure that each creditable ingredient is listed as a unit of volume. So now we can move on to step four. But before we move to step four, let's look at a couple of examples that do not include units of volume. The slide here and page four of the worksheet include an example of a combination baby food containing granola with banana and cinnamon. The ingredients are listed as a percentage of the total weight. In order to find the volume of the creditable ingredient, which in this case is the banana, you'd have to take additional steps or request more information from the manufacturer. Also on the slide here and on page four of the worksheet, there is a combination baby food containing beef, tomato, macaroni, and peas. The package does not list the amount of each ingredient. In this instance, you would also need more information from the manufacturer, such as a product formulation statement. If you would like more information about a product formulation statement, please visit the link located on page four of the worksheet. Okay, I know that was a lot of information about step three. So before we move on to the final step, let's do another try it out polling question. So let's read this question together and then you can click on an answer of the poll on the side of your screen. The question asks, is the amount of each creditable ingredient listed on the food container as a unit of volume, such as cups, tablespoons, or teaspoons. So this container of baby food contains one tablespoon of beef, two tablespoons of tomato, three tablespoons of peas, and one tablespoon of macaroni. So go ahead and click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen, and don't forget to click submit at the bottom. Again, if you're unable to select or submit an answer, you can just go ahead and use that chat box. So please do that now. Do you think the answer is yes? the combination baby foods list the ingredients on the food container as a unit of volume? Or no, the combination baby food does not list the ingredients on the food container as a unit of volume. Okay, I'm going to give you all a few more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's see those answers. All right, great, great work, everyone. So the answer is yes. This container lists the ingredients in tablespoons, or the abbreviation TBSP, which is a unit of volume, which most of you got correct, so great job. Okay, let's take a look at our final step, step four. Step four asks us to compare the amount of each food component in the container with the amount required in the CACFP infant meal pattern. So let's go back to our example of the combination baby food containing squash, turkey, and cooked grains. We know from step two that this combination baby food contains ingredients from two food components, the vegetables fruit component and the grains meat meat alternates component. We know from step three that the amount of each creditable ingredient is listed as a unit of volume in tablespoons. If you look at page two of the worksheet, you can see that the infant meal pattern requires you to offer two tablespoons of vegetables, fruit at CACFP meals and snacks. Because this tub offers four tablespoons of squash, which is a vegetable, one tub of this food fulfills the vegetable to fruit component. The infant meal pattern requires that you offer four tablespoons of grain, meat, meat alternates at breakfast, lunch, and supper. However, this tub only offers one tablespoon of meat. 
Since this tub only offers one tablespoon of meat, you must offer three more tablespoons of an iron fortified infant cereal and or meat meat alternate to fulfill the full four tablespoons of the grains meat meat alternates component. Okay, let's do another try it out polling question. Let's read this question together and then you can click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen. So the ingredients in this combination baby food are one tablespoon of beef, two tablespoons of tomato, three tablespoons of peas, and one tablespoon of macaroni. This time, the question asks us to compare the amount of each food component in the container with the amount required in the CACFP infant meal pattern. So does it fulfill the vegetable to fruit component at lunch? Remember that the infant meal pattern requires that you offer two tablespoons of vegetables fruit at CACFP meals and snacks. So go ahead and click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen and don't forget to click submit at the bottom. If you're unable to select or submit an answer, you can also just type your answer in the chat box. So go ahead and do that now. Do you think the answer is yes? This combination baby food does fulfill the vegetables fruit component at lunch? Or no, it does not fulfill the vegetables fruit component at lunch? Okay, I'm gonna give you all a few more seconds. Five, four, three, Two and one. Let's see those answers. All right, nice work, everyone. The answer is yes, this combination baby food does fulfill the vegetables fruit component at lunch. Tomato and peas are creditable ingredients in the CACFP infant meal pattern, and they are part of the vegetables fruit component. This jar says it contains two tablespoons of tomato and three tablespoons of peas. So we know that two tablespoons plus three tablespoons equals five tablespoons. And the CACFP infant meal pattern requires that you offer two tablespoons of vegetable fruit at CACFP meals and snacks. This jar contains five tablespoons of vegetables. So five is more than two. So one jar of this food does fulfill the vegetables fruit component at lunch. Okay, let's do our last try it out polling question. Let's read this question together and then you can click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen. This is the same combination baby food we saw in the last polling question. The ingredients are one tablespoon of beef, two tablespoons of tomato, three tablespoons of peas, and one tablespoon of macaroni. The question asks us to compare the amount of each food component in the container with the amount required in the CACFP infant meal pattern. But this time, we are looking at ingredients they may count toward the grains, meat, meat alternates component. So does this combination baby food fulfill the grains, meat, meat alternates component? Remember that the infant meal pattern requires you to offer four tablespoons of grains, meat, meat alternates at breakfast, lunch, and supper. So go ahead and click on an answer in the poll on the side of your screen, and don't forget to click submit at the bottom. If you're unable to do that, remember you can just go ahead and um, type your answer in the chat box. So go ahead and do that now. Do you think the answer is yes? This combination baby food does fulfill the grains, meat, meat alternates component at lunch? Or no, it does not fulfill the grains, meat, meat alternates component at lunch? Okay, I'm gonna give you all a few more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's see those answers. All right, nice work, everyone. The answer is no, it does not fulfill the grains, meat, meat alternates component at lunch. So beef is a meat and is the only ingredient from this combination baby food that can count toward the grains, meat, meat alternates component. This jar tells us it contains one tablespoon of beef. The CACFC infant meal pattern requires that you offer four tablespoons of grains, meat, meat alternates at breakfast, lunch, and supper. This jar only contains one tablespoon of meat. One is less than four, so one jar of this food does not fulfill the grain, meat, meat alternate component at lunch. Therefore, you must offer three tablespoons more of an iron fortified infant cereal and or meat, meat alternate to fulfill the full four tablespoons of the grain, meat, meat alternate component at lunch. And to help you add the volume of the ingredients together, Page four of the worksheet contains a quick guide on converting different measurements to tablespoons. 
And you can see on the slide here and on page four of the worksheet that an eighth a cup is equal to two tablespoons, three teaspoons is equal to one tablespoon, and a quarter cup is equal to four tablespoons. So this concludes the informational part of our webinar today, and we will answer some questions in just a second. Again, if you would like to submit a question, go ahead and type it into the chat box at the bottom or side of your screen. And after this webinar, we, re we recommend that you try out more practice questions at the National CACSP Sponsors Association website at www.cacsp.org backslash learning center. You can also submit or track continuing education credits with NCA at that link. We also recommend that you visit the Team Nutrition CACSP Training Tools webpage at the URL listed on the screen. And finally, we recommend that you watch your inbox for a post-webinar email that includes your certificate of participation. You should receive this by March 30th of this year. Please wait until after March 30th to ask about your certificates and check your spam and junk folders. And if you're viewing um, the webinar with multiple people, you can print out a certificate for each person. And now we will take some questions. So on the webinar with me today is my colleague, Mimi Wu, who is also with Child Nutrition Programs. She will be helping me with asking and answering your questions. Mimi? Hey, Katie, great presentation. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to our audience for your um, amazing questions as well. So the first one we got asked, what if a food package says it has a quarter cup of pumpkin and a half apple? So it doesn't actually give you the amount of the apple in cups or tablespoons. What would we do then? Okay, great question. Um, and if you remember, we actually had a similar example earlier on in the webinar. Um, but since pumpkin and apples are both from the vegetables fruit component, then you only have to worry about providing enough of the vegetables, fruit at the meal or snack. Um, so you would offer that two tablespoons of the pumpkin and apple baby food to fulfill the full amount of that vegetables, fruit component. Got it. Got it. Okay. Another great question we got is, what about if there are ingredients on the baby food package that we want to serve that are not listed on the charts on this worksheet? Okay, so the charts on pages two and three of the worksheet, um, they contain food items that are common ingredients found in combination baby foods, but you're definitely right. Um, they do not include all creditable and non-creditable ingredients, um, but for a more extensive list, you can look at Appendix F in our Feeding Infants in the Child and Adult Care Food Program Guide on our Team Nutrition website. And we can definitely um, send out that link to that resource in our post-webinar email. Um, and we can put a link in the chat box now. Great, thank you. Another question that we got was, do we even need to serve store-bought combination baby foods? Okay, um, so you do not need to serve store-bought combination baby foods. We know that some CACFP operators are interested in serving them. So hopefully this webinar and worksheet help to answer some questions related to store-bought combination baby foods, um, but serving them is optional. Great, and I think we have time for one last question, and it's, is this worksheet available in print? Great question. So um, this worksheet is available online right now in English and Spanish, um, and it will be made available in print at a later date. Printed materials are, of course, free for all of our CACFP operators, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say make sure to sign up for our Team Nutrition e-newsletter or follow us on Twitter, and our handle is at Team Nutrition, to hear when this worksheet is available in print. Um, and we can send out a link to the sign up for our e-newsletter in our post-webinar email. Um, so I think that's all the time we have, but thank you all for your great questions. Um, if you have more questions or need more clarification on anything we discussed today, please contact your state agency or sponsoring organization. And that is all we have time for today, but please know that we do read all of your questions and comments, as well as the comments in the post-webinar survey, in order to make sure our materials meet your needs. Thanks again for spending time with us today. We hope to see you at our next CACFP Halftime Webinar on Thursday, June 17th where we will be discussing serving snacks in the CACFP. 
have a great rest of your day.